Before watching this video, I need you to go back in this OpenGL playlist and watch the Model View Projection Matrices video, video number 25. Go watch that video because I'm going to rely on your memory of information I presented in that video. So go watch that video and then continue on with this video. Here's our handy dandy tool that we've used in previous videos. I'm going to put the cube into the world. Let's scale the cube a little bit. Scale the cube a little bit. Uh, let's push it out down the negative x direction out here. This is very similar to what I did in that video I just told you to review. What's kind of fun with the spheres, we can make it look a little blimpy. Push it out towards the cube. Maybe give it a little bit of height and push it to the right there. You can see the camera is looking this direction, not able to see this. So then we have to rotate everything in front of the camera. And we do that by adjusting this look at point here, this look at vector right now. It looks like we're looking at negative 1.5 on the Z. And this is the negative Z direction. So we're looking at negative 1.5. The camera's looking right here. I want the camera to look this direction. So that's a terrible arrow, isn't it? I want the camera to look this direction. So I'll tell the camera to look at negative 1.5 on the X. I could tell it to look at negative 2.5 or 2 or anywhere on this line. As long as the camera's looking out that direction, that will move the cube and the sphere in front of the camera. We grab this slider and say, turn. Grab this slider and say, keep turning. And there we go. If I fix the eye to the camera position, our aspect ratio is hideous. There's the cube and the sphere in front of the camera. Let's go back to our fly around view there. And let's review these matrices. Okay, this matrix here is the model matrix for the cube, or I guess box here, but cube. This matrix I apply only to the cube. All right, this matrix is the model matrix, more specifically the model to world matrix, meaning it converts or transforms all of the vertices in the sphere into the world position. But this matrix right here is specific to just the sphere. And then we turn around and say, let's hit both of those guys with this matrix here, which is the world to view matrix. Okay, it moves the world into the view. You saw how the entire world rotated, and we put these things in front of the camera. We picked up the world and move it. Well, what we're doing is after applying the individual model matrices, we then apply this world transformation matrix to each one of these. So as you can see, this red highlighted matrix, we apply it only to the cube. The blue highlighted matrix, we apply it only to the sphere. This green highlighted matrix, the world to view matrix, we apply to both the cube and the sphere. Now let me go back and rotate this a little bit by changing our look at point again. And I really like this because the two origins, I mean coordinate spaces, the two coordinate spaces are not perfectly aligned. And looking at these two coordinate spaces, you can see that both of these shapes have different positions depending on how your, or what, what coordinate space we're looking at here. For example, this is the positive x direction. This is the positive Z direction for the world. Positive X, positive Z, positive Y goes up. And so if I were to ask you, where is this cube in world coordinate space? You'd look at this and say, well, the center or the origin, the origin is about right here. So the position of the cube in the world coordinate space, the red coordinate space, is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and a little bit there, I'm going to say negative 3.25. And then there's no direction in the Z. So we'll say negative 3.25 on the X. There's no y, y difference either. So 0 on the Y and 0 on the Z. That is the position of the cube in the world coordinate space. And I know negative 3.25 is correct because that's what we used right here. Negative 3.25. I'll give you a little hint. It showed up right here too. Again, go watch the game engine programming playlist to understand how this works if you want to. But let's look at the other coordinate space we have, which is the camera's coordinate space or the view coordinate space, the white grid here, the white coordinate space. Where is the cube in the white coordinate space? I will have to estimate this one, but the positive z is this direction in the white coordinate space, the view coordinate space. The positive x is this direction, and the positive y 
is pointing the same direction as the world coordinate space. We haven't done anything to change that, but definitely the positive x and positive z are off from the world's coordinate space. In fact, you can see that we've essentially rotated the world by this amount right here that I shall call theta. Anyway, the basis vectors are different. The coordinate spaces are different. What is the location of the cube in the view's coordinate space? Well, I'm going to look here on the x. It's, let's see, to get to this origin right here, looks like we've got to go about this far on the x. So roughly 1.5-ish on the x, negative 1.5. And the x, negative 1.5. The x, 0 on the y. The cube didn't go up or down 0 on the y. But then in the z direction, the negative z direction, I'll guess that it's negative 1, negative 2, and maybe half or 7, 5, somewhere in there. We'll say 2.5. Negative 2.5. Rough guesstimate here. There you go. The cube has a different position depending on which coordinate space we're looking at. In the world coordinate space, it's negative 3.2500. In the view coordinate space, negative 1.50, negative 2.5. So it's very critical to say what coordinate system are we looking at. If we thought about our city or your city, whatever city you're, you live in, here in Salt Lake City we use a grid coordinate system. So I could actually say you live at 1575 south and 1342 east and that's literally a, an xy but it's north south east west but it's a, essentially a coordinate that i can use to get to your location now if i give you that number and you start using that in the global world coordinate space meaning our entire world what you would use on your gps uh first of all the numbers don't translate very well but if they did if they did then you would end up somewhere completely different because I gave you the wrong coordinates for the space that you're considering. I was thinking in city coordinates and you were thinking in world coordinates. So it's important to be aware that when we have coordinates, they are with respect to the coordinate space we're talking about. Now in this example, it's kind of boring because I have both of the origins lined up here, but I could certainly come in here and say, let's move the camera position so we can, let's see, slide slide this out here and slide that out there you can see now the origins are definitely definitely not lined up in view coordinate space here's our camera we've seen in several videos but the camera is still at the origin of the view coordinate space but where's the origin of the world coordinate space now let me get my red the origin of the world coordinate space is right here we moved it out here the cube still has a location of negative 1, 2, 3.25 in the world coordinate space. Negative 3.25, exact same coordinate that the cube had uh, previously when I had the world in a different position. We did not change the negative 3.25. The cube's position or model to world transformation matrix puts it at negative 3.25, 0.0 zero on the other coordinates but now the cube's camera position has changed the cube's camera position i'm totally gonna guess this but, but before i actually do that let's let's do our positive x direction that way our positive z direction that way our positive y is that direction overlaps with that positional vector let me get rid of that the positive y straight up our world coordinates or our view coordinates well this is still the positive x positive z, positive y. What's the cube's position in the, I'm sorry, view coordinates? What's the cube's position in the view's coordinates? Well, it looks like, I'm totally guessing here, but on the x, it's going to be negative 1, negative 2. So I follow this out all the way here. Would it intersect with the, I can't tell. I'm going to guess negative 2. I could be totally off there. Negative 2. Uh, I didn't change the y at all, so that's still 0. But then on the z, the z's definitely changed. It's 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, negative 12. I'm going to, I don't know, negative 15 maybe. Totally guessing here. But the cube has a different position in the world coordinate system than it does in the view coordinate system. So it's important to understand these positions with view to world. What's well, even kind of cool, we can figure out where the camera is. The camera's at 0, 0 in the white view coordinate space, but in the world's coordinate space, the camera is actually at 1, 2, 3, 4 on the x, so that's 4, 
Uh, let's do red. Let's do red. The camera's position in the world is 4 on the X, 0 on the Y. There's no up and down here. And then positive 1, 2, 3, 4 on the Z. So our camera's position in the world is 4, 0, 4. However, in the view coordinate space, the camera's sitting right at the origin. Now it's important to keep track of these positions for several reasons. I'll give you a simple example we're going to come up on early, but then this just keeps coming up and up and up and up. Say we want to light our scene. We want to put a light out here. If I place the light, oh, let's put the light right about here. I put a light bulb right there. Then we would expect this side of the sphere and this side of the cube to light up pretty strongly because there's a light right there. This this edge of the cube or the this edge of the sphere would be darker because it doesn't get as much light but right here on this side of the sphere we'd get some strong light and so when we do our calculations we do it with the with respect to the position of the light and as long as we're consistent with the coordinate system that we're just putting the light in then then everything will be fine but if we mix these coordinate systems all of a sudden bad things happen for example the light right now is at negative one negative two in the z negative one negative two on the x so in the world coordinate space the red coordinate space negative two negative two and zero and as long as i compare that position with the coordinate locations of the sphere which so happen to be these this is the coordinate space of the sphere in world space, not in view space, but in world space, then the sphere will light up correctly. I'll get the light on this side. But if I all of a sudden mix a world coordinate with a view coordinate, then I could end up lighting a different part of the sphere. For example, if I use the sphere's world coordinates for the sphere's position, the sphere would be out here. But then if I interpreted this position as a view position instead of a world position, all of a sudden my lighting is going to be horrifically wrong because it will be negative 1, 2, negative 1, 2. My light will be here instead of over here. And so I think it's over here, but all of a sudden the sphere is being lighted from this direction. So we'll see a lot of light over here, and it'll be very dark over here, and we'll scratch our heads thinking, why is it dark over here? We we, we put the light bulb here. Well, no, we didn't put the light bulb here because our math mixed coordinate positions and we compared the sphere's world coordinates position with the light's view coordinate position. So I'll show you how to transform and make sure that we get all of our coordinates in the same coordinate space. So then we do calculations like this, then everything will turn out correctly. Anyway, that is world position versus view position. It's important to understand the different coordinate spaces, how they work, and the different positions.